Hey folks, Matt from ArtOfTheImage.com, Canon M50. Still reviewing it, got it in for review here with a selection of lenses, as you know, including the venerable little 50 F1.8 STM, which I'm going to use with the uh, M adapter on here. Very excited, having a lot of fun with this camera, really liking the camera so far. Uh, but I was uh, surfing around and saw that DP Review, Digital Photography Review, who I like to read. I think they're a great site. Um, on, the, on the main page, their M50 review stuck out at me. The reason it stuck out at me was because it, 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 it's kind of a provocative title. Canon EOS M50 Review, Good Photos, Bad 4K. Now, that's interesting. It was interesting to me because... Um, as you know, I've made no bones about the fact that the M50 has a limited or um, crippled 4K. I'm not exactly sure what the best term is there. But I've always been careful to give Canon full kudos for the fact that regardless, we still have 4K in this body. Yes, it's got a heavy crop, 2.56 times, 2.7 times, depends on who you listen to, um, in 4K. Yes, that crop can get worse when you use digital IS. Um, and no, you can't use dual pixel AF. Are all those things I don't like? Absolutely. I wish, I really wish we could use dual pixel AF. A lot of people have talked about, and DP Review does here, why that is the case. And contrary to what DP Review says here, I personally think, and Canon has alluded to that in interviews, basically said so, that it's just a price factor. Where this camera is priced at, they're not going to give you the whole enchilada. They're not going to give you dual pixel AF at an $899 price point with a lens for this mirrorless camera. And you know what? I get that. Do I like it? No. Do I get it? Yes. It's marketing and it's sales strategy. The interesting points here um, in the DP review, review, <laughs> in the, the DP review review, uh, was the fact that they say the two major issues is the dual pixel AF, uh, AF system is disabled at 4K, which as I just pointed out and I pointed out in previously and numerous times when I've been talking about the M50. And they also say that the crop is very heavy uh, and it gets worse with digital IS. Now, they go on to show some interesting photos here. You can see uh, a crop overlay of the different crops. We've got the full area 1080p with no IS. Uh, we've got that, and that has no crop other than the 1.6 times APS-C crop. The red box is standard IS, and it has a 1.1 times crop. The orange box is 1080p enhanced IS, and they say it has a 1.42 uh, times crop. Pink box is 4K no IS with a 1.7 crop. Yellow box is 4K standard IS at a 1.75 times crop. And the black box is 4K enhanced IS at a 2.25 times crop. Now, I guess the first thing I want to point out here is I'm glad DP Review has put out this information. It's good to know. But I have said in the past, and I've said it with pretty much any manufacturer out there, digital IS or even digital zooming, anything digital on the camera practically sucks. I would not recommend using that before I'd even tried it because I know that digital IS, similar to digital zooming, is going to give you a crappy picture and it's going to reduce quality. And, and you know what? They go on to say that. With the digital IS, we get a softer 4K. Now, they're saying the 4K in here is actually not as good or on, uh, on par with, say, an A6300's 4K. So when you put the digital IS on, you're making it even worse, and it gets softer, and it gets worse. So, um, okay, I'll give you that point. But my point to begin with, before I even got the camera, I knew I was never going to use that function. It's kind of one of those things, you know, sometimes a manufacturer puts something on a car or any piece of electronics on a camera in this case that is just a stupid feature that you're never going to use. And I would never use digital IS. We've got very good image stabilized lenses. Why would you want to enable digital IS, put on all these extra crops? I mean, it's just a selling feature. And I guess if you want to knock Canon for saying it does that, I guess you can, but you don't have to use it. Basically, your default, I can't think of a situation I would ever use digital IS on any of the mirrorless cameras um, from Canon. Uh, especially in 4K when you're losing 
um, when, when, when you're losing field of view, width, you're, you're putting a heavy crop on it, and you're losing image quality. You got great IS lenses. Why on earth would you want digital IS? Um, I wouldn't use it. I just wouldn't use it. So to me, they've made a lot of hay here about something that I think is a non-starter. Yes, Canon says it's there and you can use it, but I wouldn't use it in the first place. And I think most of you know that. I think most of you wouldn't use it. Now, I'll stop right here and say, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Am I right? Would you use digital IS? Or unlike me, do you think it's something that you would use and you like that it's an option on there? I've always thought digital IS was a gimmick and I've always thought it doesn't work well. And exactly like they're saying here, it reduces quality. And in this case, even worse, puts these heavy crops on. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Now, continuing on, um, they do talk about the rolling shutter being bad. And they say a big problem in 4K. Now, okay, I'll give them that too. Um, and other cameras have issues with rolling shutter as well. The jello effect, as you will. Um, and they say that it's roughly around the A6300, the Sony A6300's rolling shutter problem, jello effect. Well, that's a much higher priced camera, um, considerably higher. And I mean, this is $8.99 with a lens kit. You can get the camera for seven something. So it's one of its competitors, if it even has many competitors at this price point, probably just the Panasonic's at this price point to do 4K and everything it offers, um, it's equal to. So again, um, yeah, it's got the jello effect, the rolling shutter. Um, the way a lot of us shoot, that wouldn't be an issue. You really only see that when, like, you're panning and moving and things like that. And there's, there's ways to counter it. And some cameras are better than others at it. Yes, it's a weakness of the M50s. But it's not a weakness, especially at this price point, that a lot of its competitors don't have either. So, again, I think comparing apples to apples, it's um, not really a big deal. We go into more about the digital IS, and they, they do, that's, I want to hammer that home because they get right into a lot of words are spent on the digital IS in this review, and my easy answer to that is don't ever use it. I wasn't planning on using it in the first place. So I just want to counter to you folks that maybe have read that and thought, oh, it's terrible. I know people that have read it and thought that those crops they were talking about were what you get in 4K regardless. And it's like, no, it's not. It's when you use digital IS or IS. You do get a crop, a heavy crop from 4K, but it gets worse with this digital IS. Don't use it. It makes the camera a heavier crop and it also reduces the image quality. In this review here, they say that, and this is meant to be a negative, controls are minimal. You can adjust audio levels for the built-in or external microphone, turn on a wind filter, or activate an auto leveling function. Okay, where's the negative there? Because at this price point, again, I just want to say that that's a lot of functionality at 4K. It's pretty much all I need. Depends what you're doing. I mean, it, it, it really... For most of us, that's all the functionality we need. And thank God, we have a built-in external mic. We've got the ability to adjust audio levels. We've got um, an auto leveling function, and you've got a wind filter you can turn on and off. None of those are automatic. They have controls. Um, I'm just thinking those are all positives, yet it's kind of being spun as a negative here. They go on to apologize. They say, we take no pleasure in having you write so many negative paragraphs about a camera. But Canon has really dropped the ball on its first non-pro camera with 4K. Um, my my problem and why I'm, I'm, I guess, putting a counterpoint out here to DP Review's opinion, because they're heavily hammering this camera. And yes, I have pointed out the flaws of 4K. But I've also, oh, I'm applauding Canon, thanking them, encouraging them to continue giving us Good 4K. This was the first camera, APS-C, in the can Canon lineup that we got 4K. Is it perfect? No. But it's at an $899 with lens kit price point. That's pretty hard to beat. Pretty solid kit lens with that, too. It's a very good offering. A very well-specced camera. Does it have perfect 4K? No. Would I like less of a crop factor? Yes. Uh, could it have less rolling shutter? Sure. Could it have better image quality in 4K? Yeah. But you know what? We got 4K. 
We've been asking for it. I've been asking for it. A lot of you have been asking for it. And I think they did very well at this price point. And often you guys get will get upset with me because I'm attacking Canon or I'm criticizing them. And I criticize anybody that I think can do better. I'm, I'm almost always encouraging them to do better or saying, hey, come on, look, what you're offering here at this cost is not good. I did that a lot with the 5D Mark IV, and I think at the price point it deserved it. This, however, I'm defending it. I'm defending Canon here. The M50 is a great offering at this price point. These um, cons that DP Review is talking about, yes, they are. They're, they're negatives or things to bear in mind about the 4K on this camera. But the camera is, as they pointed out, a great photo camera. It's small and light, feature-packed, top-of-the-line APS-C image quality. Very good competitor in that sense. Awesome video camera if you want it for 1080. Great vlogging camera. Full, very-angle, touchscreen LCD. Uh, there's a lot to like about this camera. And we did get 4K. Never mind all the negatives or all the perceived negatives. We have 4K. It's usable. No, you can't use dual pixel AF. And yes, it has a crop. A lot of people are still going to be very happy with that. I am. I can still work around it for a lot. And if I want to vlog, I don't really think I actually need 4K. And even if I do, I can I can work around that too. We'll discuss that in another video when I do some vlogging tests for you. But I would use a wide like the 10 to 18 or the 11 22, shoot in 4K, and I'd work around not being able to have the dual pixel AF. It's not not a deal killer. In fact, I would have I'm I'm glad that they brought this camera out with the 4K it has as opposed to bringing it out and not giving us 4K. Remember, it's the first APS-C from Canon with 4K. They could have given it to us without 4K. So, these cons that DP Review are talking about, substantial crop, rolling shutter, shutter, no dual pixel AF, yeah, they are cons. Still a great camera. And then they go into great detail about the digital IS issues. Don't use it. <laughs> to me, that's a, a total non-issue. I would have pointed it out and then just <laughs> took my pen and crossed it out. Don't use digital IS. It's stupid. I don't even know why Canon includes it. If you forget about the fact that Canon says this camera has digital IS, it solves a lot of your issues there. Don't use it. Much better without it. You got beautifully IS stabilized lenses, Canon IS lenses. That's the way to go. I like DP Review, don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking them here, just begging to differ on kind of the slant of the review of the M50. I totally agree with them that this is a great photo camera. I disagree with them a little on the 4K thing. Yes, I wish we had had a few things different on the 4K, but I'm still very glad to get the M50 with the 4K it has, despite the limitations. What do you guys think, though? Do you agree with me? Do you agree with me that... The 4K in here is better to have it the way it is than not have it at all. Do you agree with me that the M50, the way it is spec'd as is, despite what you may have wanted different, what I may have wanted different, is still a great value for the money? To me right now, this is the APS-C camera to buy in Canon's lineup. This is the Canon. If you're not going full frame, this is the camera to buy. A lot of people saying this is a entry-level camera and whatnot. I don't think so. I think this camera is a fully capable camera. I think it would be interesting to see when we have like an M6 version of it or say a 7D version of it come out where we have more controls and whatnot on the body. But this is the one I would buy right now, I think, out of all the Canon lineup. The only caveat to that would maybe be the SL2 if you're really trying to save money and want to put more of your money into lenses. But I want to know what you guys have to think. Let me know in the comments below. Am I out to lunch in my take and my counter of DP Review's review here on the M50? Or do you agree with me? Do you agree with DP Review or do you agree with me? Do you have a different slant? What do you think about the M50? What do you think about its uh, 4K? And what do you think of it as it is at the price it's at, as an offering at this price? You think Canon did a good job? Let me know in the comments below. I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say. Let me know if I'm out to lunch. And uh, stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at ArtOfTheImage.com.